Good afternoon. In the previous class, we had talked about reading skills. We had also talked about what is reading, what is reading aloud, and what is reading for meaning. Now, when we say reading for meaning, we mean that you are focusing on the meaning of whatever you are reading. And for in that, we also talked about reading silently. We discussed two different techniques of reading that is skimming and scanning. Now skimming as we already said, skimming means getting the gist of information. That is you are reading at one go and you are just getting the main points. That is said to be as skimming. For example, if you are in a hurry and you have to uh, go to your office or you have to go to the to your workplace and you are you have to read the newspaper as well so you will not go through the newspaper in detail you will go through it in a very quick glance or very quickly at one glance you would see the newspaper and get the gist of information that is whatever is important in a very quick go you will collect that information and more ahead so that is said to be as skimming. Now scanning, scanning is a technique wherein you go through the text very minutely and thoroughly in order to get the whole of the information. Now that is said to be scanning. For example, if you are, if you want to locate somebody's number in the directory, you will have to scan through. That means you will have to go through the directory minutely in order to search that number. Now that is said to be scanning. So these were the two techniques that we discussed in the previous class. Today we are going to move ahead. We are going to talk about the intensive and extensive reading techniques and we are going to discuss their advantages and disadvantages. To begin with, let us first see what is it that caused poor reading or what is it that caused slow reading. The first thing that caused slow reading is poor concentration. Now the concentration could be poor because of lack of interest. As you can see over here, the first point that we have mentioned over there is lack of interest. Now if you are not interested in the material that is provided to you or in the material that you are reading, you will certainly not be focused and you will not be attentive. Now when you will not be attentive, you will not have that zeal to move ahead and your reading skills or your reading would be slow because of the very simple reason that you are disinterested into reading or whatever is the content that you are reading, it is not of your interest. So automatically you will be reading it very casually and you will not be reading it attentively. This may be one of the reasons of slow reading. Next is a reason that uh, is there with all of us and it is very difficult for us to get over that. That is daydreaming. Often you will find that even when you are sitting in a class or you are sitting in a meeting, you cannot control your mind and there are certain things that is that are going on at the back of your mind and you tend to move into that world. You tend to think of those things that are there and you lose your interest or you lose your focus or your attention on the thing that you are doing, whether it is attending a class or it is reading. Similarly, when you are reading something and all of a sudden, if something strikes your mind, you are captured and you move to that land and you are then disoriented towards what you are reading. So you have to really take care that when you are reading, you have to focus yourself and you have to really have a control over your mind, over your senses so that you are able to read the content effectively or whatever you are reading, you are actively reading that. Now, if you are not interested into what you are reading or if you are daydreaming, if you are dreaming something else or if you are physically present but you are mentally absent during the reading of the text or whatever you are reading and worrying about other problems that are there,
there or whatever is there at the back of your mind, you will certainly not be able to focus and this would lead to slow reading. So let us find out how can you avoid this slow reading practice. So the first thing that we would suggest you is plan time and space to concentrate. Whenever you are reading something, always find out a particular time and space as well. Why we say time? Because it is a time that matters from or differs from person to person. Like if you ask me, I may be comfortable reading a thing at night, at late night or I may be comfortable at reading a thing uh, in the morning. But it may not, may or may not be so with you. You may be comfortable reading a thing in the morning. That is, at that point of time, your senses are very active, you are very alert, you are very focused. So you will focus at the thing that you are reading very, very carefully. So plan time and space to concentrate. Reading is an activity, children, that requires patience. And when we say patience, it is really very difficult to control your senses and for that you need to focus on whatever you are reading and for that you should have a control on your emotions, on your powers, on your senses and you need to really focus on what you are reading so that you get the information of what you are reading in the right sense. That is why we say you have to really plan it accordingly. Now, we would always suggest that whenever you are reading, choose a place that is calm and quiet. By that, you would be able to concentrate more. Why do we suggest that whenever you have to read something, please go to the library, consult the library, sit in the library because library is a place that is very quiet. The environment is very serene and you would really love to sit over there and read because you would be, you are surrounded with books all around. So automatically the environment over there is very serene, it's very calm. You would find everybody over there sitting is focusing on his or her own work. So it is the best place for reading. Apart from that, even if you are reading at your homes or at your hostel rooms, take time that you decide that when you read, it is absolutely peace around. That is, whatever time you are deciding at that point of time, you should have a very calm environment, a peaceful environment. There should not be jarring music. There should not be something that is going on outside that is disturbing you because if you will be disturbed or if there is something that is disturbing you, you will not be able to focus and if you will not be able to focus, you will then develop the habit of poor reading. That is, even you are investing your time, you are putting in your efforts but those efforts are not coming out in the way you desire or those efforts are not giving you the right results to make it more simple try and take out time for reading and plan it in accordingly or plan it in a manner that you get the best results and supposedly if you have to read something and there is music around so in that matter you must uh, wear headphones and read because when you are reading headphones that matches that environment you or the music or the loud music you will not be distracted by that so that and your senses would be able to focus on what you are reading should you have time to read in a place where you won't be dis where you won't be distracted or interrupted as i already told you you should always take up a place where you get a peaceful environment so that you are able to focus, you are able to concentrate and you are able to give your best. Another interesting thing is you need to capture and connect. When we say capture and connect, it means you need to first find out what is that that you want to read. What is it that you want to read or what is it that is there? What kind of information 
information do you want to have? Supposingly, you are reading a text. You must have an aim behind reading that text. Now, when you have that aim that this is what I know and this is what I need to know. So, in that way, you have already captured that this is the information that I have. And then, when you go through, you will be able to connect to what you want to know. And this is how you would be able to focus yourself towards developing good reading skills. You should also have a reading plan. When we say a reading plan, it means you must have a preview about what you are going to read and you then you should skim the information. Skim the information that is, you must get the gist of information. In short, you must know what is there in that content and then move ahead. And then you should capture and connect, that is know what is there in that text and what are you looking for when you are reading that material. And this is said to be active reading. And in the last, you should be able to review that whether whatever you had planned or whatever information you had thought that you would gain out of reading that content or that material, have you reached that goal? So this reviewing will help you that if, I, if you are able to solve the problem, supposingly if you have been given the reading and comprehension and there are questions along with that, so if you plan it accordingly and you are able to solve the questions uh, rightly in that manner, so you would be able to know that whatever goals you had set for yourself, you have accomplished. So when you set a plan before you or when you make a plan, you should follow that plan. And that would help you develop good reading skills. Particularly for reading, we should always be focused because if we are not focused on the reading skills, the mechanics of reading doesn't work. You have to know that which is the information that you have to skim and which is the information that you have to scan. Not all the information is necessary. So, you have to skim through and take the gist of the information. And when you are scanning, that is when you are looking for important content, when you are looking for something that would solve the problems or that would give an answer to the questions, in that case, you will have to scan the material, that is, you will have to go through the detailed study or you will have to go through the text minutely, thoroughly, in detail, in order to get the right kind of information. We talked about active reading. In the previous slide, I talked about reading. I said that you should be reading actively. If you really want to develop a good reading habit or develop your reading skills, please read actively. Now, what is meant by that? Let us just see. Active reading means you are actively involved in whatever you are reading. And for that, you have to take up a text or you should take up a text that is of your interest. Now only then you would be actively involved in the reading. And you should not do empty reading. Now what is empty reading? Empty reading is a reading just we, that we do for namesake. That is you are asked to read, you are suggested to read, that is why you are reading. But actually you are not getting anything out of that. That is empty reading. So whenever you are reading, please try and focus on the content. Focus on identifying the main ideas and on understanding how supporting points reinforce those ideas. That means that whatever you are reading, Try to connect it. Try to make it interesting by reading it again and again. See?
see once you read it again and again automatically whatever text it is it appeals you and you get engrossed into that and in other words or in simple words get interested in what you are reading and certainly you will be involved into that once you involve yourself into the reading practices or once you involve yourself into reading something you will definitely be interested and you will be like you will like to read it more and more as we talked in the previous class about intensive reading we said that it is narrow reading a reading that is limited generally children it is used in the classroom it is as you see the characteristics i have just try and explain you the characteristics if there is something that you are not able to understand please let me know see intensive reading we say it is a narrow reading because in this the teacher gives you a content that you are supposed to read and then you are asked to solve the questions based on that reading it is generally or usually it is a classroom based reading and the reader is intensely involved in looking inside the text because he or she has to answer the questions that is why he or she has to read the content very very minutely and carefully the aim behind this kind of reading is to build more language skills rather than develop the practice of reading because in this kind of reading your focus would be more on developing the language skills developing the vocabulary understanding the language and then reading so the aim here is to make you aware of the sentence patterns the patterns that are used in the in different context or the same word that is used in different context and for that you are using vocabulary so the which word has been used in different context that you come to know so in a nutshell it develops your language skills more than your reading skills the advantages of this kind of reading is that it provides a base to the students it provides a base to develop their vocabulary their language skills and give them an idea about reading so this is done generally by the teachers in the classroom to help the students develop a habit of reading and also to make them understand certain language patterns and structures through the text that is given to the students it provides a base for students to develop a greater control of language and since the text is small you are able to go through it minutely and hence you are able to develop a greater control over that it provides for a check on the degree of comprehension for individual students that means on based on the text there would be question answers and you are able to answer those question answers and in that way the person can get an idea about his or her own reading skills if the person is able to comprehend the questions properly or if the person is able to answer the questions in a good manner or correctly it means that the person has invested time and the right kind of time in developing the reading skills or he or she has read the text minutely has read the text using the scanning technique that is going through the text very very minutely so these are some advantages of intensive reading technique generally it is used in the classroom it is something that helps the student develop their vocabulary develop their grammar and language skills now it has also got some disadvantages let us see what are the disadvantages of intensive reading see the basic disadvantage that this kind of reading has is the teacher chooses the material of his or her own choice now that material may not be that interesting or it may not suit or cater to the interest of each and every student in 
the class. Now, when the student is not interested into the kind of reading or into the kind of material that is provided to him or her, in that case, the reading would be affected or in that case, the comprehension would be affected. So, this is one of the disadvantages of intensive reading technique. Another disadvantage is that if there, if in a class there are, uh, it's a heterogeneous group of students wherein the students come from different backgrounds. Now, the text that is chosen is of a, of a certain standard. It may not cater to the standard of all the students. Now, the students who have got multi uh, reading abilities, for them it would be difficult because they are, uh, they have, they are voracious readers. They have read a lot and for them it would be an easy task. For some it would be a difficult task. For some it would be a very enjoying task. So to the students who are having these multi abilities, for them intensive reading would not be so interesting. But it is a task and everybody has to do that. That is why they also do it. And another thing, they do not learn much or they are not able to uh, develop the reading skills so vastly or vividly because it is a short text that is provided to you. Depending upon the time that the teacher has, supposingly if the class is of uh, one hour duration, in that the teacher may give you a text of uh, one or two pages and then ask you to read, then uh, solve the questions, comprehend it and then develop the reading uh, practice through that. So this is a very limited text that is being uh, given to you because of the constraint of the timings. And there are certain other factors also that prove a constraint to the teacher due to which the text could not be elongated or the teacher cannot take up a longer text. And this becomes a hindrance to the students who have multi reading abilities or who want to read more and more. For them, this kind of reading technique will not be beneficial. But of course, for those students who do not have a reading habit or who are not voracious readers, for them to begin with, this is a very very good technique and this would definitely help them to develop good reading habits, understand the language patterns, understand the vocabulary and use it in the proper context. As I said, it is uh, extensive reading techniques are also there. Extensive reading is something that is there and we use it for our own pleasure. That is, it is for, it is for some, uh, you can say for scientific purposes, it is for publications, yeah, uh, it is for, it is reading for pleasure. Nobody is forcing you to read it. Extensive, that is, there is no limit. As we said, in intensive reading, it is narrow reading, wherein you are given a content and you have to focus only on that content. You have narrowed the scope of reading to one or two pages. So that is intensive reading. But here, as the name indicates, extensive reading, it means you can read at length and you can read howsoever, whatsoever and to, a, to the length that pleases you. So this kind of reading is extensive reading. And this, the aim of extensive reading is to build the reader or to take is to make the readers confident and to give the readers uh, enjoyment basically. So students read as much as possible, there is no limit. They can read a variety of texts that there is whatever suits them, whatever may be their field of interest that is some may be interested in fiction, some may be interested in something else, some may be interested in scientific documentaries or something. So it is, it depends absolutely on the individual, howsoever, to whatever length he or she may choose to read. And in this, reading is its own reward because it is something that is there and it is out of your own will that you are doing it. You are not forced to read. You are doing it out of your sheer will or you are doing it out of 
high. You would be reading usually faster than what you are doing in an intensive reading. The benefits of this is through this students may develop a reading habit. Because once you have identified, you remember capture and connect, we told you, you need to capture and connect. Now if you are able to capture and connect, you will be able to develop good reading habits. Because when you get involved into that reading, you will certainly be engrossed into that. And this will help you read more. Intensive reading is a platform that is teaching you how to read. And that is helping you to develop this habit. And extensive reading, it is a style which you will develop at your own. And once you develop extensive reading habits, there is nothing that can stop you. In the previous classes also children, when we were talking about communication, I told you that whatever you speak must have some in substance. I told you about the quote of Robert Frost wherein he said, that half the world is filled with people who have something to say and can't say it. And the other half is filled with people who have nothing to say and keep on saying it. That means half the world is there with some kind of knowledge but because they are not able to communicate well, they are not able to present their ideas properly. And the other is there who can speak but they think that they are good communicators and they keep on saying the same thing again and again. Now this would, this is there because they don't read. If they read the things properly, they will not be speaking empty. Speaking empty means they would be having some sum and substance while they are speaking. So whatever you speak must have a sum and substance into that. You should be genuinely interested in whatever you are reading as well as whatever you are speaking. When you read properly, you would have a knowledge and certainly when you have knowledge, when you will speak, that knowledge would be reflected into your speech and you would speak sense and not nonsense. So, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed today's class. If there is something that you are not able to get through or that you have not understood, please let me know. I will be happy to answer to your queries. Thank you very much.